There we go. Okay. Emmy, uh, thanks. We, let me introduce <laughs> our presenters are Michelle Segal and Xing Song. Uh, they are presenting on Spilling the Tea, Cautionary Tales and Dashboard Development. And I turn it over to you. Thank you. I would love to be ha talking about a fairy tale uh, dashboard where the user says, I love this. This is perfect. There isn't a single variable that I would ever need again. Uh, however, that isn't the case. And uh, we are doing the cautionary tale on dashboard development and some of the things we wish we knew before we started. My name is Shelly Siegel. I'm a data analyst at EdPlus, and I will be presenting with Ching Song, who is a data analyst in our team. And um, here we go. So what we're going to talk about was we have a grand plan on dashboard development. How it worked out for us, spoiler, you guys are here listening to us talk about things not working out so great. Uh, some solutions we came across and some suggestions as you plan your dashboard projects. So we had this big idea because we had a problem. We have reporter uh, users that were overwhelmed with reports. We would we have a number of we had a number of reports that were similar, but there was a slight tweak to them because of different audiences, um, because of different filters that went into it. Um, and we had a lot of our users go, why don't these numbers match? I don't know which report to use. What do I need to do? And then on the developer side, we would spend a great deal of time trying to figure out why they were different and what the slight use cases were. And, you know, depending on our, the source of truth, um, they had slightly different lenses, slightly different requirements. And, you know, over time, things got more and more different. So our solution was everything to everyone dashboards, or as we all know, you're always gonna miss that one variable. So let's say almost everything to everyone dashboards. So we have a one-stop shop that is going to be as flexible as possible and has the ultimate source of truth by replacing the different use case specific reports. So what our approach was, was to create a data set that had the data that was requested, the data that we anticipated, basically everything we wanted. Um, you might want to report at student level or course level, um, at application level. So that data source would have multiple levels of, of truth <coughs> and it would all be in one place. We enabled our, um, in one of our dashboards, we enabled uh, the users to, re to request their own content uh, their own measures, um, and by leveraging Tableau's hide and show container tool gives a lot of flexibility to the dashboard. Uh, additionally, we have uh, dozens of filters to make sure that they got exactly what they wanted. So here's the good news. Sometimes it works. And in that case, we have the ULC dashboard, the uh, Universal Learning course, uh, Courses dashboard. And if you notice here, we have a range of information that we can share. Where did people go? Uh, what session were they enrolled in? Notice how quickly things are changing. ASU admissions, how many people got in? What program did they, were they admitted to? Let's see the demographics. Ooh, ah. Um, in addition, we have the performance of the various courses, as well as individual uh, student performance, how they did on their grades. This is, you know, a wide variety of information that we're sharing, and it's all in one place. They don't have to find another dashboard. So that's the good news. Uh, however, sometimes it doesn't work. 
Um, and in that case, we have the onboarding dashboard, which I'm going to stay here. Uh, this is version one, which is works most of the time. Um, however, we've had to adjust it so it loads faster because our initial load took too long. And right now, uh, when the query ran, it ran over time. So it, it had to be updated manually. Uh, the version two of this has about 60 filters. It has about 10 pages and um, it's not working so good. So what are the differences between the two? The ULC has a relatively small data set. It has about 50,000 students, about 800,000 records. It's limited to 25 courses. It's a very wide, it's over 200 fields, but like I said, it's a, you know, in the scheme of things, it's fairly small. It loads in tab Tableau in about 12 minutes. We created a minimum number of fields in Tableau itself, and there's only about 20 um, filters. That said, our new and exciting student onboarding now has a large data set. It has all applications. It has all applicants. It's very wide. It's got about uh, 8 million records. It doesn't load in the time allotted. It creates, we've created a lot of complex calculated fields. And in that case, we've tried to push a number of the calculations down to the query, which makes that run even longer. We are taking advantage of per, uh, parameter-driven calculations. Like I said, this has 60 filters, so it takes a while to load. Okay, sometimes it doesn't work in a way we expected. Here is another example, um, census in the current enrollment matrix dashboard. We built this dashboard because we received so many requests asking for enrollment mailed retention data. So we were hoping to create a single dashboard that can meet the decoder data requirement. Um, in this dashboard, we have about 25 filters. Many of them are hidden behind the uh, maroon filter icon to save some spaces. It includes eight parameters. Most of the parameters are located in this build your own table section. The users can select the report content they are interested in. They can use the category parameters to aggregate data. Some of the parameters control the column value. Some control the row value. And we pull down. You can notice that we have another build your own chart section, which is also um, controlled by the parameter. Our initial plan is to create a single page that presents data at different levels. You may notice that I didn't switch the tabs. I didn't make any real selection. That is because um, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute between each click. So if you click the button, you will know how long it takes. We have to encourage our user to use this pause button. So they click the pause and make all the selections all at once, and then after they finish all the selection, click resume and have to be patiently wait for the page to load. This is what we have to suggest our users to do now. Okay, so what are the differences between our Eurome matrix dashboard? and the ULC dashboard that Shelly just um, talked about. The enrollment matrix dashboard has larger data sets, it including um, enrollment retention and mailed data. And we use five small, relatively small data sources. 
each data source contains 10 million records. The data set is wide. Um, it includes about 70 fields, and it is very long. The calculations are driven by parameters, which makes it difficult to push the calculations back to SQL query. There are about 25 filters in this dashboard, and each tab contains about 50 worksheets. So the dashboard contains about 200 plus worksheets. What are the effects of the differences? The front end feature um, allow users to self-serve and provide lots of flexibility. Um, however, it takes so long to load, which is painful. The parameter-driven calculation. In the build your own table section, we swap about 25 sheets in order to allow users to aggregate data in the way they want. Lots of worksheets include and lots of calculations involved. So that means lots of time needed. Most of the dashboard has many filters. Some of them have 20, some of them have even 60 filters. As you can imagine, if half of the filters are going to run, it will take some time to load. The above parameter and the filter issues also means it takes forever for the dashboard developer to make updates. We have to update in multiple places and also in multiple tabs. We try to give so many options to the users while developing the dashboard. Um, unfortunately, not all the users have enough understanding to know how to make the best use of the dashboard in order to get what they need. We did our best to document as much as we can. Um, as you can see, we try to put a lot of clarification in the tooltip. And we also um, always to add the footnote in the dashboard. Our solution, extract is the key. When you have a huge data set, um, Tableau cannot complete the extract refresh in a lot of the time out limit. So we push the work to data source by creating customer tables in AUDB data mart instead of running queries in Tableau. For the two dashboards Shelley just presented, um, she pushed lots of the calculations to the query, which makes the dashboard load faster. Um, however, Creating tables in DataMart takes up the AUDB resources. If you have to create multiple tables to support a single dashboard like how I did, um, it takes time to create and also takes time to maintain the tables. As lots of people suggested, we also tried live connections. It probably works good for small data sets, but for our project, the load time was unacceptable. If a single data source does not work, you may considering um, splitting up the data source in order to enable extract refresh to run successfully in a lot of time. Again, the maintenance work depends on the dashboard developer. For every change you make, it has to be changed in multiple places. It's also not convenient for the user um, because they have to switch between different tabs in order to find the data instead of just find data in one single page. To improve the performance of the dashboard, we also tried to limit the number of filters and also to reduce the sorting. For example, if you would like to present the count of new and continuing students. Does it matter to place new in front of continuing or they can be automatically sorted? It's just for you to consider. We noticed that 
In our project, if we limit the subtotals and grand totals calculation, the load time can be significantly reduced. Um, does use this okay with all the changes? Not always. We need to make sure that the users get what they need first. That's the most important to us. In general, when we add more data fields to the data source, or when we have new features bring in to our dashboard, it is common that the dashboard become slower and slower to load. It would be nice if we could get back on stakeholders or maybe have separate dashboard created. One is lighter, which has smaller data set and less features. One is heavier with bigger data set and more features. Um, not last but not least, the onboard dashboard documentation is needed. We always receive questions about um, from stakeholder asking what are the differences between the dashboard and other dashboards. If you expect this will happen, then create a slide deck to document the known differences. This will be helpful. And also, you can also provide some training sessions to the users and take a look at the particular issues they have. So finally, our suggestions. Be reasonable with what's feasible. If what we've presented doesn't sound fun and exciting, it's not. We're still uh, working to find better solutions um, and finding stable uh, data sources, which is one of the problems I'm having with the uh, new student onboarding. It's so large that even Altrix is having issues with it. So um, limitless flexibility will impact performance, and maybe you don't need a, a, everything to everyone in one place. Uh, connect your source of truth either as tabs in the same workbook or links to other workbooks, which is something that we're considering as well. Um, as, as Ching mentioned, that you could have the workbook light or dashboard light and dashboard heavy. With the dashboard light, you could have summarized information and quick numbers, KPIs. And if you know that you need some heavy uh, calculations, you know it's going to take some time, so you can go get a coffee while you're waiting for things to load. Um, additionally, the, we suggest documentation, documentation, and documentation, because we all know that that's the last thing you want to do and the last thing that's done, but it's so important. We, uh, as Ching showed on her dashboard and also on some of my dashboards, we have uh, explanations on what the page is, where the sources are at the bottom. Um, we're trying to get to a number of training sessions that are videotaped so people can look at them. Hopefully we can add them to the dashboard too so you just have a click to see how you might want to use this. We have a user Slack channel so people can ask questions of our dashboard. Um, yeah. This is not as uh, exciting an answer as we'd like to give, but it is a work in progress. Uh, does anybody have any questions? So I know we, we struggle with the same thing of um, when we go to create a dashboard, folks will ask us for 50 filters and like we know if we put 50 on there, you're never gonna use the dashboard and having those conversations about trying to get people more focused so that like you were saying that there is that like there's a focused use where you need fewer columns so that it becomes something that's manageable to both update and and maintain and it sounds like you have had some successes in doing that in in some areas um, can you talk a little bit more about um, about how how you have those conversations with folks and maybe some strategies for, for getting people to focus on 
like, I know that it seems nice to have 50 filters, but what are the 10 that are, are actually going to, to be useful? With the successful dashboard, it, it was much more limited, like we sa I said. Um, there was a limited audience for it, and that was the key. Uh, although the audience seems to be getting bigger as time goes on. Uh, but, you know, they, the stakeholders were very involved in the development of the dashboard. And so when we had questions, we could get together uh, and we met with them every two weeks. Whereas, uh, at least for me, the student onboarding dashboard, it was kind of like, everybody asks about this. Everybody asks about this. There isn't one place to go because we are trying to be everything to everybody. We want to answer marketing. We want to answer operations. We want to answer um, uh, the Google Analytics people um, and all those things. And as it is, our data set is huge because we are trying to, for at least the one that I'm working on, the student onboarding, we're going from the first click that you have ever done for, at at ASU that you were like, oh, I've heard of ASU to, did you do an inquiry? Did you submit an application? All the way to your first enrollment. So we're, we have this very broad subject with a lot of pieces along the way. And everybody's interested in a different piece of the pie. And there's no, we haven't gotten the consensus of what that means. And even our data sets are changing. Um, I think, Lisa, you said you had the same issue, that some of our data is from Salesforce, and they change things on us without telling us. And it's like, surprise, that filter doesn't work anymore. So there isn't, there isn't one audience that we can go, OK, let's talk. Whereas with the ULC, there was one audience they were all on the same page, and actually, they gave us the pages to work off of. So I think that's that's the big difference is everybody wants the data, but I'm not sure that they're all willing to put in the time. So we're still trying. And so that the, be go ahead. Uh, in the enrollment matrix dashboard, we receive lots of um, most frequently asked questions. So, and also we have a Google Sheet which we collect all the um, feedbacks and all the additional requests. So um, we use that Google Sheet to build our own development plan. So in the um, dashboard version number two, we will solve the following um, requests. And in version number three, here are what we are going to do. And uh, one of the things that I would advise is also make sure whatever the dashboard is that you stick to your, its mission. Like the student onboarding dashboard version two has gotten out of hand. I mean, for me, I'm like, uh, it, it's too late to do the pushback, but uh, the student onboarding was supposed to go from first click to first enrollment. Now we have first click Enroll, first enrollment, second census, and graduation. I was like, but that's not the purpose of this. So, you know, I think we needed to do some pushback earlier. So start early, start off in pushing back. Any other questions? Any other suggestions? We take suggestions too. Well, thanks for coming. I hope we uh, scared you. <laughs> so you don't do what we did, or you can do it better. That would be that would be the best thing that could come out of this. Do it better than we did. Yeah, I, I think what I what I'm hearing and taking away from this is that when you right when you're first asked to design a dashboard or develop a dashboard is to get a very clear definition of the problem it's solving and the audience that it needs to address and document that up front and then when as people ask for more evaluate does that fit in with this should we change it 
or does this mean this should be another dashboard or another way of delivering this information? And I think as long as you're, if you're able to be clear up front, then people will more easily work with you. But if they, if it, they come into it thinking that it's anything that they want to ask for, then they're disappointed when they don't get anything that they ask for. That's, that's exactly, it was like second census. I'm like, this is about onboarding. What? <laughs> so, where did that come from? And graduation is another dashboard altogether. That's called enrollment. So, Yeah. Yeah, I do like it, your it, suggestion of having a slide deck to help users with co more complex dashboards and also um, having a, a, a Slack channel for it. I think that's a really good idea. I think I may try that. It, well, <laughs> so we I like that one. Yeah. So um, thank you very much, uh, Michelle and Shing, for our joining and everybody else that's joined our session. Um, I found this very interesting myself. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Bye.